Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here at 6. I'm Whitney Ward, and you probably noticed for sure by now. Uh, I'm here at home. We're still social distancing. We're all still working from home, but we've switched things up. And Mark Hanrahan is back now at the Creme 2 studio. So hi, Mark. Happy Monday. Yeah, happy Monday to you as well, Whitney. And quickly, how's the whole at-home setup going? <laughs> you know, it's going fine once we kind of figured out all the technology and it, it is a lot of work. I definitely have a lot more respect uh, for you guys knowing just what it takes behind the scenes. So many people and uh, myself included just kind of assume you set the camera up and then off you go. But that's just not the case. Upside, of course, is I'm wearing sweatpants right now and that's kind of awesome. That is the um, upside. But it's weird. It's weird not being able to see you guys for sure. I can only hear you. Yeah, you kind of <laughs> feel like you're in the dark, right? You're just on an island or something. Yeah. But uh, no, your shot looks great. So good on you. We'll check back in with you in a little bit. Well, eight counties in Washington state now approved to move on to phase two of the state's reopening. Governor Inslee approved five on Friday and three more this morning. That's the counties here highlighted in yellow, including several around Spokane County. Those new counties include Wakaiacum, Skamania and Stevens counties. And while it might be tempting to travel to these counties, Creme 2's Amanda Rowley explains why state leaders and local health experts say you shouldn't do that. Today, the Department of Health announced three more counties in Washington are moving on to phase two of reopening. Kittitas County has also applied for a variance waiver and is under review. If you live in a county still in phase one, you might be considering a trip to areas reopening before the rest of the state. After all, counties in phase two can gather with no more than five people outside their household. And outdoor recreation, like camping, can resume. Again, only in small gatherings. That all may be enticing for even a weekend trip, but local health experts strongly discourage it. Spokane County Health Officer Dr. Bob Lutz says that's because travel can cause the spread of coronavirus. I think that there is concern that you may find yourself going someplace and doing so, maybe taking COVID-19 with you, especially since we know that there is asymptomatic transmission. He says we saw this early on in the outbreak in Western Washington. Many of the counties on the, the beach communities and on the peninsula, their cases were directly related to individuals leaving the Puget Sound region. Governor Inslee has strongly encouraged people to stay close to home multiple times during press briefings, but he has not prohibited travel to other counties. That said, spokesperson Tara Lee explained counties could choose to adopt a local ordinance limiting access to restaurants, bars or salons to county residents only. This would allow a non-county resident to travel to a phase two county for a hike, but that person could not eat at a restaurant. Each county would need to come up with its own rules, but health officials and the governor's office are urging people to just stay home until your county has moved on to the next phase. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. Breaking news tonight, Spokane County one step closer now to reopening. The regional health district just unanimously approved a variance presented by Dr. Bob Lutz. It's already cleared a number of hurdles. First, Dr. Lutz wrote the letter. Second, we've heard from Providence that they confirmed to Dr. Lutz the hospital is well equipped in terms of space and PP and E. Right now, third, today the letter getting unanimous approval from the Board of Health, a sort of mishmash of local leaders. So what's left to do? Well, the Spokane County Commission has to okay the proposal as well as three commissioners. They're on the health board and they voted yes already, so that shouldn't be a problem. And then the real hurdle, the governor's decision, because here is the thing, Spokane doesn't even qualify to apply to enter the phase two right now. We're too big and have too many cases of COVID-19. So this is sort of a Hail Mary attempt to say to the state that we like where we're at in terms of containment wise, and we have a plan and we hope that you like it. And so let's give it a try. And while we know that we didn't really qualify for that existing process, felt like we had a good case for our community to be able to put that forward. So as for whether Spokane County actually has a real chance of starting to reopen soon, that's yet to be seen. Clearly, local leaders are in agreement that we could handle it, but state leaders have made no indication about what it would take for a county this large to start heading in that direction. So we'll keep you posted on what they decide. Some sad news tonight. There are new deaths reported at the Spokane Veterans Home. With additional details, our Regina On joins us live in the newsroom tonight. Regina? Well, Mark, the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs says two veterans at the Spokane Veterans Home who had been diagnosed with COVID-19 died late last week at the Mangrand Staff VA Medical Center. That brings a total number of eight 
who, eight people who have died. The Spokane Veterans Home has a total of 46 residents who have tested positive for COVID-19 and 23 staff members with positive tests. All of the residents diagnosed with COVID-19 are being cared for either at the Man Grand Staff VA Medical Center or at local hospitals. Four residents of the Veterans Home did return home from the VA Medical Center last week after their recovery from coronavirus. And in order for a veteran to return back to the VA Medical Center, they have to test negative twice within 24 hours. There is a quarantine area at the veterans home that residents who pass those tests will stay for 14 days before moving back into their room. Live in the newsroom tonight, Regina on Creme 2 News. Regina, thank you very much. New recommendations coming from King County health leaders. They are urging people to wear masks in indoor public places. And we want to know what you think. How safe do you feel wearing a mask out in public? Let us know on the Creme 2 mobile app. The face covering haven't been mandated yet, but health leaders are urging people to wear them in places like grocery stores, pharmacies and metros. Those masks don't have to be N95 surgical masks. They can be any cloth like bandana or scarves as long as they cover your mouth, mouth and your nose rather. People don't need to wear masks outdoors, but again are encouraged to do so in tight places like farmers markets and curbside pickup. Just wearing a mask won't do it. Officials say people also need to continue to practice social distancing and proper hygiene. It's also important to properly wear your mask and change it if it's dirty. A snug mask with more layers is more effective, but a thin, loose mask is better than nothing. Wearing a mask may be an inconvenience. It may feel awkward. It may look a little silly. But know this, it is a sign of our mutual concern for each other. It is a visible commitment uh, that we are doing all we can to keep our community safe, to keep our neighbors safe, to keep ourselves and our economy on a path to a healthier future. King County and the city of Seattle will be providing thousands of masks to communities that may not have access to face coverings. Law enforcement will not be involved in enforcing the directive and there won't be a penalty for those who don't comply. But again, masks are encouraged. In the meantime, starting today, major air carriers, including Alaska Airlines, will now require all passengers to wear face masks. American, Southwest and Spirit Airlines will also do the same. They are joining a list of major U.S. airlines that have similar policies in place. Alaska, Southwest and American Airlines will supply masks for those who forgot theirs at home. And if you're planning on traveling through SeaTac Airport, you're also going to want to bring a mask with you. Starting next Sunday, all passengers, visitors and employees will be required to wear a mask. Now, earlier we asked you how, felt, how safe you felt out in public wearing a mask. I'm going to walk forward and look at the results right now. And it looks like so far about 39% saying moderately safe, another 39% saying not at all, and about 20% numbers bouncing around a little bit saying very safe. Whitney? You know, it's, it is kind of weird. Dr. Bob Lutz was saying that it, it feels weird. It feels kind of silly. Mm -hmm. And it, it does feel like all of those things. When this first started, my mom made uh, everyone in my family here um, some homemade masks. And the first time I wore it, I was like, gosh, this feels really strange. But I've gotten used to it. And, and kind of like Dr. Lutz said, it's a commitment. And I figure it's relatively painless. It's, it's maybe awkward, but it's not hurting anybody. So why not? It's just one more thing that we can do to protect ourselves, but also all of those that we come into contact with. Yeah, there's a, a lot of upside to doing that. And Whitney, my wife told me uh, to be sure that you smile when you wear a mask, right? Smile with your eyes. <laughs> there you go. It's a good, good reminder because even when you've got that on and you're at Home Depot and someone says hi, you can at least know a little bit that they're That's smiling right, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's check in with Tom Sherry. I know I can start to hear some of the changes outside as we look out the remote weather window. Um, I saw some blue sky earlier when we started doing our newscast <laughs> at four o'clock, but now it's definitely getting a lot grayer and maybe a little bit windier out there. Yeah, you are absolutely correct on both those counts. And I love the fact that you are repping for the north side, Whitney Ward. You are located about, I'd say about nine miles that way north of me and uh, uh, where my location is. And Mark is located about four and a half miles uh, to my west right now. So, or to my east right now, I should say. So 
Good job that you're repping up there. Uh, and you get a good chance to see what the weather's like. I'm going to be interested in your observations over the next several weeks. 65 degrees, that's the current temperature here in Spokane. Winds are out of the east, northeast at 22 miles per hour. So yeah, Whitney nailed it. It's windy outside. When you take a look downtown, you can see the cloud cover there on our live webcam that is down pointed towards Riverfront Park. Look at the rain that is now moving into areas of central Washington, northeastern Oregon, and also Western Oregon around the Portland area. Of course, those showers are all headed our way. We'll look for rain and wind late tonight and especially overnight with a low of 47 and then a high tomorrow of only 55. We got up to about 67, 68 today. And uh, my gosh, we're going to be seeing temperatures much, much cooler tomorrow. That's for darn sure. Also with a chance of showers. Looking ahead to the weekend, uh, 73 and partly cloudy on Saturday. By the time we hit Sunday, though, increase in clouds, chance of showers or thunderstorms and a day time high of 70 degrees. If you have a moment here, Whitney, I'd like to go over to my Creme 2 remote weather window and take an observation here on the South Hill compared to the one you've got there on the north side. Oh yeah, you nailed it. Gray clouds out there and boy, it is blowing. You can see the leaves just a, sh just a trembling as we've got those winds uh, just over 20 miles an hour. I'll have a look at your seven day forecast or your 10 day forecast. Bonus, it's the six o'clock show. 10 day forecast coming up. Back to you, Whitney. That is a bonus, Tom Sherry. That's one of the best things about this six o'clock hour. Thanks so much. We'll check in with you in just a bit. In the meantime, as we're all starting to get outside when the weather is beautiful, the Spokane Parks Board is now deciding what the newest addition to Riverfront Park is going to look like. So a series of artworks have been reviewed and Creme 2's Brandon Jones explains now what you could soon be stumbling across on one of your next visits. There's a vast world of rodents out here on this beautiful place we call Earth. Just think about it. You've got marmots, which are near and dear to the state of Washington itself, squirrels, mice, but of course, of course, we can't forget the beaver. And what could soon be coming to Riverfront Park is a creative piece of art that's interactive. It's so unusual that it's striking. It's a beaver made out of bronze, but it's also a chair that swivels around and it's wide enough to sit at least two people at a time. The idea is to bring a new element to the park that's already seen a lot of growth over the last year. A place where you take a selfie and be kind of silly. Between four choices, the Joint Art Committee for the new piece felt the beaver embodied what they were looking for. The colorful statue resembles a theater mask, which aligns with the arts, but it also brings in an element of playfulness. And right now, I'm in the general vicinity of where that bronze beaver will be. A viewer poll on Up With Krim was not in favor of the beaver coming to Spokane, which in response may have delayed the conversation, so no final decisions have been made. As of now, no move in date for the beaver. What has been discussed is a location. Potential spots include the north bank of Riverfront. Another area would be directly across the river from the carousel. A final decision could run through the artists who created the beaver before anything becomes permanent. From Spokane, Brandon Jones, Krim 2 News. I think it sounds like a great idea. We have a garbage goat. I think we definitely need a beaver that you can sit around and take a selfie on. I love that idea. All right, before we take a quick break, we want to give a shout out to all of our spectacular seniors out there because this is one interesting kind of senior year, but we've got a lot of great seniors out there doing a lot of great things. So let's give a shout out now to Ethan Hughes, who is a senior at Sprague High School. Ethan has a twin. Congratulations to him as well. So keep sending in your senior photos. We love giving shout outs to those seniors. Text 2020 to 509 448 and we will send you a submission link so you can get your senior recognized right here on Crime 2. We'll be right back.